So I'm still enrolling my recognizing and respecting comfortable fullness course. It starts in about two weeks and I hope you'll check it out. I've decided that this is really the way to take on the intuitive eating principles, take them one by one and spend a chunk of time together in community, diving into them, really spending time as opposed to trying to fit in all of the principles over a sequence of weeks when everybody's at a different speed. So all the information for that is below. But this week, what I'd like to share with you is a fullness exercise to practice at home. This is something that we'll talk about in the course, but this, there's no secret about it. This is something that you can do whenever. You could do it today if you feel like it. And this is a, it's a mindfulness practice to help you start to recognize when you're at that point of comfortable fullness, whatever feels like enough in your body. It's going to be different for different people. It's going to be different for the same person on different days. And to start to build awareness around that point of comfortable fullness and start to build comfort around slowing things down and stopping at that point. Not because you should, not because you've eaten a serving, not because of any reason other than that you're learning that stopping at that point feels the best to your body. And so I'd recommend that if you wanna try this exercise, you do it on a day that you're, you have slept well, your stress level is average or below average, you've eaten regularly, hopefully with a balance of carbohydrate, protein, and fat, so that you're not excessively hungry when you go into this meal, and that you're feeling like you're in a place where you want to investigate fullness as a form of self-care. Again, not as an extension of the diet mentality, not as something that you should be doing. And, and the reason that this is such an important issue, this is the reason that people come to me. This is the reason that people seek out intuitive eating is that they feel like they can't stop overeating. And so when you get to the place of recognizing that stopping a comfortable fullness is a form of self-care, that's when you should be working on fullness, in my opinion. So if those basic conditions have been met and you're in a relatively peaceful, spacious mindset, then decide that you're going to do this exercise. Practice your messy, imperfect, mindful eating make the eating experience pleasurable. Hopefully you can eat what you want. Hopefully you're starting at that sweet spot of hunger that in which you're hungry enough that food tastes delicious, but not so hungry that eating feels chaotic. And you pay attention to the eating experience. Notice like the, the sensory qualities of the food. What's the taste like? What's the temperature like? What's the texture like? Does it change? Is it as good as you expected? Is it better? Is it worse? Is it meh? You know, I love talking about meh food experiences because I think that they're real great opportunities to explore things. But pay attention, be present. And as you are paying attention, extend that attention to feelings of fullness, right? The feeling of the stretch in your stomach is one of the most basic physical signs that your body is becoming full. There are others too, but we're not going to go into them in this, in this video, just because I don't want you to think, oh, well, I'm not experiencing that. So something's wrong with my body. Just think of it in terms of like the, the feeling of actual physical fullness in your belly. Maybe your waistband starts to feel a little tighter or something like that. Or maybe you feel like you have to like make room or something like that as you're, as you're eating, okay? And when you get to that point that you think is comfortable fullness, you don't have to know 100%. Remember, we don't have that kind of like mathematical certainty with intuitive eating. That would be an illusion anyway. This is about knowing well enough, taking a good enough guess at what comfortable fullness feels like in your body, right? This is an experiment. This doesn't have to be perfect. So you get to that point and then do something to punctuate that moment. 
Maybe you put down the fork. Maybe you sit back in your chair. Maybe you say, okay, I think I might be at that place. Maybe you say it out loud. Maybe you say it to yourself. It's up to you. And repeat these words. I always have unconditional permission to eat. But in this moment, I'm going to stop because I'm interested to see if this is my point of comfortable fullness where my pleasure is actually kind of maximized by stopping here and my body feels the best. Okay. Reinforce that to yourself and then go and do something for 10 or 15 minutes. You can um, go and journal, you can listen to music, you could go and do something creative, you can do some sort of movement, you might take a little walk around the neighborhood, you might play with your dog or your cat. I'm a huge fan of pet therapy. There are little co-regulators just itching to be there for us. You could straighten up around the house, do something that's sort of like not too demanding, not so much of a distraction, not harmful in any way, but just something that lets the time pass. You can set a timer so that you're aware of the time passing. And then after that 10 or 15 minutes, just check in with yourself. The best way I like to check in with myself is to take a couple of deep breaths, deep embodied breaths, and feel the breath. When you feel the breath, you've heard me say this before, the mind and the body are in the same place at the same time, a rare occurrence. Feel the breath coming in, feel the breath going out, and suddenly here you are. So then take that attention that you've placed on the breath and bring it to your stomach. See how your stomach feels. See how your mouth feels. See how any sense of hunger or urgency or dissatisfaction might feel in your body. And just sit with that for a few moments. This is really about slowing things down and noticing, right? Give yourself plenty of time to do this so you don't have any kind of time crunch. Just sit with whatever is there for a few moments. And then make your decision in terms of whether you want to return to eating or you want to call it a day or a meal for that one, knowing that you'll be eating again shortly, whether it's the next morning or at the next meal a few hours later. So this is a really important exercise that relies on your innate intelligence the wisdom that only you can have about your own body and what it's moment to moment experience is like, and also gives you permission to have any kind of experience that you have. There is no experience, no feeling, no physical sensation that you can have doing this experience that's off limits or not okay or abnormal. There's none. It's literally about showing up, working with things as they are, and seeing, just see. And hopefully this is not the only time that you do this, ex this exercise. Hopefully you do this again and again and again, because it's this type of repetition that helps you really find that sweet spot of fullness, just like you've worked to find your sweet spot of hunger and stop there and feel peaceful about it not feel fraught or deprived or restricted. So not to mention that when you repeat this exercise and you meet those kind of basic foundational conditions in which your body's taken care of, you're, you're reinforcing those habits too. Getting enough sleep, eating consistently, eating a balance of macronutrients, managing your stress, all of it. So I would love to hear what your experience is working with this type of exercise. I would love for you to join the fullness group that's starting on November 7th. I think going into the holidays, this is has the potential to be a huge support. Just being with other intuitive eaters and hearing other people's experiences to normalize your own, that in and of itself 
is, is priceless, you know? So as always reach out, let me know what your questions are. Let me know what your experiences are. Let me know what you're celebrating. Let me know if you have a positive experience with this, because I, I would love to celebrate with you. And I, I hope this is helpful. I hope this is something that you come back to again and again to help rebuild that trust with your intelligent body. Okay. See you next time.